I'm really, really excited that you're here joining us uh, this morning. Listen, if you're, you're you're watching online this morning, would you go ahead and shout amen in the comments? Let us know uh, that you're there, that you're excited about us continuing our series, A New Normal. And so this morning, uh, I want to kick us off with a little bit of, of Star Wars things, right? Some of you may know, if you know me really at all, you'll know that I uh, really enjoy the Star Wars um, franchise. Uh, you know, I, I get ex my wife and I get excited every Friday now for Disney Plus because new episodes of The Mandalorian hit. And so we are a Star Wars family. My son is barely a year and a half years old. He knows how to say Vader and he knows how to fight with a lightsaber, okay? I'm, I'm training him up uh, as well as we best know how. Okay, so <clears throat> go with me. In the movie, The Force Awakens, okay, the main character, Rey, is a scavenger in the middle of the desert on the planet of Jakku, all right? So over the course of the movie, Rey meets a former stormtrooper named Finn, um, a resistance uh, pilot named Poe and others and while trapped in a jail cell with the, the, the evil uh, Kylo Ren, uh, Ray unexpectedly uses the force to, to defeat Ren and the stormtrooper guards. And so she had previously believed that the Jedi and the force were just myths, were, were legends, but, 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 but begins an awakening to the reality of it. And so the movie, spoiler alert, ends uh, with Rey realizing that she is a remnant of the Jedi. And so she she's seeking training from the old disillusioned loner, which we most people know, Luke Skywalker. And really what, what's happening here is this, uh, that there, there, she is a remnant of what many considered a bygone uh, era what many considered a dead um, um, mysticism of the Jedi, a dead order. And she, because she is a remnant, there aren't that many left of them, but, but she's experiencing hopelessness. Could you imagine being a scavenger in the desert? Could you imagine trying to scavenge enough parts from old uh, starship destroyers and other ships uh, that, that have crashed landed onto your planet uh, because of whatever war or whomever just doesn't really know how to pilot a ship and, and experience that deep deep hopelessness hoping that you get enough parts to take to someone that they give you food that they give you what you need to eat to make it through the next day so many of us are like that we feel that way right now we feel hopeless maybe some of us feel like we are part of a remnant of people in our city a remnant of people that 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 people don't really like to talk about maybe we're a certain ethnic group maybe uh, we are a certain class a socioeconomic class or level that we only make a certain amount of money or maybe we exceed that or whatever it is maybe we feel that way because of the election results maybe we feel like a remnant maybe we feel hopeless maybe we feel like nothing and no one cares but but if you look at the story of ray in the force awakens you'll find that that story is much like so many of us but but, but most of our stories would stop at, i believe the part where it means to take a big risk the the the, the right and that that very crucial moment when, when 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 you have the opportunity to experience blessing is when so many of us give up because we feel like a remnant because we feel hopeless and this morning if you if that's you i want you to turn to the book of zechariah and we're going to be in zechariah chapter 8 beginning in verse 4 and as you're turning there i want to give you a little bit of context of what's going on in zechariah zechariah's name uh, means one whom Yahweh or God remembers, one who ya whom Yahweh remembers. Uh, he is both priest and prophet and encourages the people by, by painting a very detailed picture of their hopeful future by comparing the current destruction of the temple um, with, 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 with what's going on. Um, and so Zechariah is a, a contemporary um, of Haggai, so where we were last week, um, as we walked the book of Haggai, and, and so he was a contemporary of Haggai the prophet of Zerubbabel and Joshua the high priest, 
And so the book in, in, is in the genre known as apocalyptic. And so this kind of literature was really meant to offer hope to a downcast people through, de the, uh, through describing the ultimate defeat of evil and victory of God for his people. And so in some ways, apocalyptic literature is, is like parables that is meant to reveal and hide truth. Ezekiel calls his uh, uh, apocalyptic m material parables. So when we're really looking at what Jesus is, is showing us here through the book of Zechariah, what God is trying to help us to see. So if you're there, Zechariah chapter eight, uh, beginning at verse four, um, I want you to, to type amen in the comments and you can go ahead and say that. So Zechariah chapter eight, beginning of verse four, it says, and again, like last week in Haggai, hey remember they're contemporaries. So they're utilizing this phrase, the Lord of armies says this old men and, and women will again sit along the streets of Jerusalem, each with a staff in, his, in, in hand because of advanced age. The streets of the city will be filled with boys and girls playing in them. The Lord of armies says this, though it may seem impossible to the remnant of this people in those days, should it also seem impossible to me? This is the declaration of the Lord of armies. The Lord of armies says this, I will save my people from the land of the east and the land of the west. I will bring them back to live in Jerusalem. He says, they will be my people and I will be faithful and there be their faithful and righteous God. Amen. Verse nine, the Lord of armies says this, let your hands be strong. You who, who now hear these words that the prophets spoke when the foundations were laid for the rebuilding of the temple, the house of the Lord of armies. For prior to those days, neither people nor animal had wages. There was no safety from the enemy, nor anyone who came or went, for I turned everyone against his neighbor. But, verse 11 is when God makes a pivot. But now I will not treat the remnant of this people as in the former days. This is the declaration of the Lord of armies. For they will sow in peace. The vine will yield its fruit. The land will yield its produce. The skies will yield their dew. I will give the remnant of this people all these things as their inheritance, as you have been a curse among the nations. House of Judah and house of Israel, so I will save you and you will be a blessing. Don't be afraid. Let your hands be strong. Today, I want to give you a couple of things that Jesus, that God, that the Spirit, the triune God are passionate about. He is passionate, firstly, about living in us. Jesus is passionate about living in his people. Leviticus 26, 12 says, God says this, I will walk among you. He says, I will be your God and you will be my people. He is passionate about living among us in his church. The Lord is always with us, but, but you and I experience him in a special way when we gather together in his name, whether it be virtual, whether it be together. The Bible says where two or more are gathered together in the midst, there I am, Matthew, Matthew 18, 20. He is in the midst of them, two or more gathered in his name. God, uh, listen church, freedom, hope. God is with us. I want to encourage you with that today. God is with you. He is passionate about living in you. If you are a blood-bought believer, if you are sold out, if you're a disciple of Jesus Christ, God lives within you. You, When you experience salvation, when you surrendered not just not just committed you surrender everything that was yours is no longer yours the way you thought is no longer that way when we surrender it's giving up everything i am my old philosophies my old way of thinking my old way of life my old way of talking my own way of moving and breathing and interacting with people is changed because i've surrendered everything to him and i've asked the son of the living god to, to come and enter into my life, to be, to, to, to be my King and my Savior. And the Holy Spirit fills us and dwells among us, for His name is Emmanuel. He dwells and lives among and amidst His people. And so 
He's passionate about living in us. Hear me. It excites him. It delights him. It's what he has always wanted to live in and among his people. The question is, are you and I as passionate about God living in us and among us as he is? Because we should be. Let me tell you, and, and, and here's how we express some of the many ways that we can express that is because when we really are about and excited and passionate about Jesus living in and through us, then everything that we do is about his mission to seek and save the lost. We, we did a series a few months back, Who's Your One, right? And that series helped us to navigate through just one person. I, I challenged us to narrow down our lives to one person person that doesn't know Jesus that we can share him with that mission to seek and save the lost. Here's how it works. I was at the doctor's office on Thursday uh, for my lower back and uh, I took a book with me, a book that we're going to walk through in January called Dangerous Prayers. And I had this book with me um, partly because um, I know that, uh, you know, while you're in uh, most of the time when you go to a physician of any kind, you have to sit and wait. Right. So I was prepared. Um, but I also wanted to wanted it to serve as a piece for me to engage in conversation. And guys, it worked. I, 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 I sat down to begin to read my book. And before I could even do that, um, uh, one of the, the people that worked there called me back and my, uh, the, my the doctor saw the book and other people saw it and they began to ask, wow, I've never seen that before. What is that about? And guys, I began to share about Jesus openly in my doctor's office telling them about prayers and and that the, the, there are prayers that we can pray as as, as disciples of jesus that uh, that can be dangerous uh, but but you know but also so much worthwhile guys this is what it means about being on mission it's as simple as taking a book that can do all the heavy lifting for you that, that builds interest and unique in what jesus is doing in you because he is passionate about it and he has died on the cross he rose again so that you can experience this passion frank laubach who was born in the u.s in 1884 was a missionary to the illiterate um, he, he taught people how to read so that they could actually know the beauty of the scriptures he once wrote this and i, I love this he says can we have that contact with god all the time all the time awake, fall asleep in his arms and awaken in his presence. Can we attain that? Can we do his will all the time? Can we think his thoughts all the time? Can I bring the Lord back in my mind flow every few seconds so that God shall always be in my mind? I choose to make the rest of my life an experiment in answering this question. God is passionate about you. He's passionate about living in you. Let me put it this way, okay? In my refrigerator, on my refrigerator at home, uh, Tiff and I, we have uh, so many different cool things. We have a picture of Tiff and I, um, uh, you know, it's, it's a fake National Geographic picture with like a shark behind us, you know, trying to, you know, we're trying to avoid the shark. Uh, so we kind of look scary. We have uh, pictures of um, some of the uh, our former students from student ministry. Um, we were in Virginia, um, who, you know, their graduation pictures. We have family pictures and different ones. We have pictures of our son. We have pictures of different family. We have magnets and all this other cool stuff. And all of that is there. Why? Because you, you, that's where, you know, the food is. And so it, seeing them, seeing the people, seeing what we enjoy. It, it's, it's a constant reminder. You put something on your refrigerator is because you want it there, right? You know, we get works of art from our nephews and even from Magnus uh, that go on the refrigerator, not because it's something that we want to do or that it's just, you know, common, but because we want to see it and be reminded of what that represents. And so if God had a refrigerator in heaven, Roll with me. If God had a refrigerator in heaven, do you know that your picture would be on it? If he had a wallet, your photo would be in it. He, he, he sends you flowers every spring and a sunrise every single morning. Whenever you want to talk, he'll listen.
He can live anywhere in the universe and he chose you. He chose your heart. So, so, so face it. He's crazy about you. He's passionate about you. He wants to see you grow in the knowledge of his scriptures. He wants to, to see you grow as a son and daughter of the kingdom of the king. He wants you to minister and love and show grace and patience and long suffering. He wants you to, to be just and to be holy as he is holy. Why? Because he is crazy about you. Does that sound like weird to you? Does that sound awkward? I mean, we all sing Jesus loves me, right? Magnus loves it. He, do, he does this. Tiff taught him, you know, the, the sign. And so for, for Jesus and whenever he wants to sing it, he will make the sign. I, I want to sing about Jesus. I want to sing about his love. Tell me more about Jesus. And, 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 and so we, we sing the song, Jesus loves me, right? This I know for the Bible tells me so. But does he really, people question this. Does he really like me that much? Is he really, is he really passionate about me? I wonder how many of us think of God's love in such terms. Does he really like being around us? Does he really enjoy seeing us laugh and smile and, and enjoy ourselves? Is he, is he really emotionally involved when it comes to our lives? And the answer is yes, all caps. Yes, God is passionate about his people. He is emotionally involved with his people. Or to put it in biblical terms, God is passionate for his people even when we have failed him. When the prophet Zechariah proclaimed God's message to Jewish exiles, you know, reconstructing the temple in Jerusalem, he describes God's passion for his people in beautiful words that are meant to encourage and lift their spirits. Because when we when we change something unfamiliar or destruction it's hard to believe that that god can redeem the situation and create beauty it's hard in the midst of a new normal when we're trying to figure out what the next step is can god really take ashes and turn them into something beautiful can god really take my sin away and and turn me into something to, to be adorned, to be, to be whole? Can God really take my marriage that's falling apart, my, my cheating boyfriend, my cheating spouse, can God really take us, and the, the ugly things that we've done, and transform them into beauty? It seems impossible, but God even asks that through the prophet Zechariah, the Lord of armies. Do you want to know why the, these prophets call him that during this time? The Lord of armies, it is to, to remind him that he is mighty. And when you believe and know that God is mighty, that there is nothing that too hard for him, that he has no rival, that he has no equal, that our God is bigger than any and every situation and circumstance you will ever face then it shifts your life. How you live is different. And so, so many of us are trying to prepare for war when God is asking us to sit at the table and eat. So many of us are preparing for, for oncoming battles instead of operating in the peace of Christ. Listen, I, I, I've had to do this recently, right? My, 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 uh, and just, uh, just, with certain people in, in my life and trying to navigate how I should feel or what I should know and how I should best operate. The Bible says in Psalm 46, 10, to be still and know that I am God. It doesn't say to be still and feel that I am God or, or think that I am God, to know. It is a, a cognitive understanding that, 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 that echoes and reverberates through my, my mental faculties it, it, faculties. it touches my very heart and soul. I have to be still and know that you are God. And so I laid it at his feet and I don't stress out over it anymore. I don't let it affect my health anymore because my God is bigger. My God is greater. Amen. If that, if that's you, if that encouraged you put amen in the comments right now, cause that's awesome. God spoke to his people and encouraged them that there would be life again that there would be life again. He said that people would grow to be old again and the streets would be safe for children to play in again. God reminds the listeners that he will be faithful and just that he calls the people his own. 
Our minds and hearts sometimes struggle to see past what our eyes see. Our minds and hearts sometimes struggle to see past what our eyes see. Frequent reminders that, that, that God is still on the throne and has our best interest in mind are extremely helpful. And so regardless of where you were or how you voted uh, or, or, or where you are on one opposite spectrum or one end or when it comes to Black Lives Matter or whatever it is, whether you, you feel frustrated, whether you're prideful or you're arrogant or you're ignorant or no matter what camp you fall into, there is struggle because we, 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 we see with our eyes and, and we, we, we get frustrated because our eyes are showing us something that, 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 that God's word is saying, you don't need to worry about. But, 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 but we still do. We still fret. We still, we still can't sleep. Uh, we, we, we still have bags under our eyes. We still cause our bodies stress and, and which leads to sickness. We, 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 we dip ourselves into anxiety and worry and frustration and, 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 we, and it grows and grows and it becomes bitterness. It becomes sour. It begins to rot. Jesus has come so that you and I can experience life. Uh, one of my, you know, I love uh, Lord of the Rings as well, and my favorite character in Lord of the Rings is Gandalf. Um, and if you ever watch this, you'll you'll see that he transitions, right? He, he goes from Gandalf the Grey to becoming Gandalf the White, and he's serious and he's stoic and he's about business. He's there to help turn the tide of the war against evil. And one of the things that has always stuck out to me is that transition, how Gandalf moved from death to life. He talks about his death. He talks about moving into the realm of, of, of the celestial. And in that realm, he, he says, as, as he was there lying there and you see him lying there and he says, I felt life in me again. He begins with this thing, I strayed out of thought and time. He, he loses himself. Uh, but 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 in the midst of it, he knows and in the moment he feels life, he knows mission, he has purpose. He knows that he is there for a distinct reason. We often lose sight of our purpose. And so here's my second thing for you that, that Jesus is passionate about. He is passionate about our obedience. Giving ourselves time to adjust to our new normal is hard, I know, but growth and production, it takes time. So uh, Zechariah 8.12 mentions seeds growing well, vines yielding fruit, crop production, and rainy seasons, all of which take time. So sometimes we need to simply wait and allow, our, and, and allow ourselves to adjust to that time. Especially even us as a church, like our vision to see chains be shattered and, and people to experience freedom in Christ and hope in a future because we hope in the hope of glory. We hope in the one who, who redeems and who saves and it takes time to plant the seeds. But, but hear me on this church, if you're not inviting, if you're not investing in other people and planting the seeds in the ground, throwing the seeds on the ground and letting the chips fall where they may and letting God provide the sun and the rain and the water and the, and, and the nutrients that, 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 that the seed needs, then we will not see any growth because guess what? You've got to be faithful and you've got to obey. The mission is, the mandate is to seek and save the lost. But if you're not inviting, if you're not talking, if you're not texting, if you're not Zooming, if you're not Google meeting or hangouting, if you're not involved, you're not commenting or sharing, if you're not engaging and trying to reach your neighbor and trying to reach maybe a teenager in your house and trying to reach the husband that, 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 that is so far from Jesus and you're trying to wrestle and grapple, you're trying to reach your child that's struggling and understanding who Jesus is. When, 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 when all of these things seem to be against you, you've got to put in the work. We have to remain obedient. In verses nine through 13, the Lord says to those who, who have been listening to the words of the Lord's prophets to keep up the good work. Let your hands be 
strong. In other words, keep doing what I commanded you to do and it will eventually pay off, right? Obedience will produce prosperity and fruitfulness and blessing and not just prosperity as in wealth. It's not gonna get you a new car. It's not gonna get you a new plane, but prosperity comes giving, <clears throat> when we, as we give, we're experiencing the closeness to the Father. You and I are so close to Jesus as we give of our time, talent, and treasure. As we are working, as we are obeying, <clears throat> we will see these things pay off. And so God is saying, when you obey me, you will be blessed. I am passionate about your obedience, not just for his sake, but for our sake as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. He goes on in verse 14 and 15, how he punished them when they were disobedient, but now uh, he will bless their obedience in such areas as telling the truth, promoting justice and forgiveness of your neighbor and not doing these things the Lord hates. So why is God so passionate about their be obedience? Because obedience brings blessing and disobedience brings disaster. Let me, let me illustrate by asking you a question. Uh, why is it important, parents, that your children learn to obey you? Why is it important that your children learn to obey you? Isn't it for their own good, right? Teaching them, teaching your child to obey you is meant to help them learn to obey their boss, uh, the police, the law of the land, and God. That's why parents are passionate about their kids' obedience. Right. God is passionate about our obedience, not just for himself, but for our own sake, because obedience bring, brings blessing and disobedience brings disaster. So <clears throat> God is passionate about obedience. Why? Because he loves you. Are we passionate about our obedience to him? Do we obey him from love with energy, with effort? because this is the sure pathway to his blessing, to his presence. But this passage also reminds us that God identifies us as the remnant, an unfamiliar term to many. One, one lexicon uh, or dictionary defines it as the remaining part or survivors, especially after a, a slaughter. So within a shrouded New Zealand forest, a tree stump keeps itself alive by holding on to the roots of its neighboring trees and exchanging water and resources through the, through the grafted root system. Though the remnant stump appears dead, a grafting of roots underground connect the part that looks dead to healthy trees. So during times of significant change or stress, we find solace and sustenance by remaining connected to the body of Christ. Just as Zechariah's name means one whom Yahweh remembers, so we are known by God and supported through his people. But again, we have to engage. So it's wise to develop these roots or maintain them or connections to other people before times of stress occur. Here's my soul tattoo for us this week. That you and I, that we can find hope for our future by trusting that God remembers us and, and, and will be our provider and our sustainer. Here's the gospel. Jesus Christ, fully God, fully man, lived a life sinless, perfect, tempted and tried beyond you and I would ever experience by the devil himself. He was beaten and prosecuted, and really unjustly prosecuted and beaten and bloodied and nailed to a cross for me, for you, for our sins, because we miss the mark every single day. We, we miss the mark. We sin against him and others, but it doesn't stop there. He died on the cross. Three days later, he kicked that tomb wide open and, and, and came out with resurrected power, with resurrected hope, with resurrected love, with resurrected grace, with resurrected compassion, with resurrected justice and holiness and power and authority that you and I can enter into a relationship with him through his shed blood. Won't you come? Won't you trust your freedom and your hope in a God who is constant in the midst of ever changing life. I pray that you would. And let us know, comment below, 
Email us at info at freedomhope.tv. Direct message us online, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Direct message one of our pastors. Let us know how we can better serve you, how we can connect with you, how we can pray with you, how can we can, can celebrate you as you walk into uh, from death to glorious life. Listen, we love you. I'm excited for you. Let's continue in worship today.